Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, and I'm in Berry today. I'm on another exploration, and in fact, I'm following in the footsteps of Thurston Hopkins, R. Thurston Hopkins. I've been reading his book, um, The Lure of Sussex, and just as on a on a whim, really, in my lives that I've been reading, we were talking about Berry in West Sussex and how he took this trip across the River Arran on the ferry and then up to the church. And I thought I would have a look at that and then just have a little look around Berry itself. So I'm standing at the edge of the River Arran here in West Sussex. Um, we're just up from, I suppose, Littlehampton, uh, down from well, actually, I'm just trying to get my bearings. Arundel and Amberley is just up on the opposite way. And here where I'm standing, if I move around here a little bit, we might be able to see just behind me. This is where, for a long time, there used to be a ferry crossing. There's some information boards up there I'm going to go and have a look at. It is a delightful setting here in Berry. It's a sort of very sleepy village just off the A29 at the bottom of Berry Hill. And at one point, this was uh, obviously an important wharf. Um, although there was a ferry here, I think according to a sign, which I'm gonna go and have a look at, uh, this was a little bit more important. But Thurston, Hop Thurston Hopkins, who I'm following in today's video, came up here, he says, in his Lure of Sussex, uh, to have a look at the church. And a, a lot of these people in the, that sort of the 1920s and 30s, you know, they, they were very interested in the churches, as indeed I am still today. So here's a, an information board. Let's have a little look at this. It says on, on the front here, uh, Berry Wharf has a fascinating history. For many years, it was busy with goods being transported along the River Arran, and it was also the setting of a historic ferry service that for centuries linked the communities of Berry and Amberley. And so that's why people were coming across the river. Absolutely fascinating, it's beautiful, and lots of interesting stuff on here. And also it tells us all the different wildlife that we're likely to find here, including the different birds, the foxes and badgers and the flowers and owls and, and all of that. But I want to go up to the church and have a look at that. So this is St. John the Evangelist Baptist Church. And what an amazing church it is. St. John the Evangelist Baptist. It's made of um, flint, rubble and stone, I think. Um, and we can see that it has got the render. Now, so many churches don't have the render. That's what really makes this church. I mean, a lot of churches had their render, but over the the outer render but over the years that render has sort of disappeared but this one has um, it we know that the tower dates back to the 12th century um, but i think uh, according to the notice board i saw that there was an in there was a the manor uh, the previous manor was here before the doomsday book so this is a very old settlement fantastic we've got cedar shingle on the roof of the church on the spire which looks just terrific and speaking to an old la uh, a lady just now the church may even be open interesting that we've got horsham slabs on the roof too as well as more modern tiles <laughs> Well, this is absolutely delightful. Let's just see if it is open. We'll go in. We'll 
close this just in case. I've got here a map. Church of St. John the Evangelist Berry, uh, 12th to 13th century, 14th century, 15th century, and 19th century. Um, different changes, of course. Let's just see. Let's hope we're lucky. <gasps> we are. Well, what a magnificent church. This is very, very beautiful. And actually, it's so nice to be able to come back into churches after all this time. It's uh, quite amazing how I've missed being able to explore the inside of churches. So here we've got the nave. Now, I haven't had a chance to read anything about the church itself. But as we come down here, let's have a look at the rood screen. Wow. Beautifully carved and still in place and still fits. So one would imagine that must be the original. And then we'll come into the chancel here. Absolutely. Lots of wood, wooden panels and things. I'm guessing that this is a, a later addition probably uh, I'm, I'm maybe 18th century, something like that. But we can see that it was originally extended to the south because of these, the south aisle on my left. I think I'm gonna have to come back and explore this in more detail here in the very dark area here is the bell tower. Well, oops, come on, there we go. Fantastic, what a beautiful building. Absolutely fantastic. Well, I could spend a lot more time looking at the church, but I want to see if I can find the old black dog and duck because there's a bit of a strange story connected with that pub. I met a lady down by the river when I was just about to start filming and she told me that the church might be open, but she also told me the interesting story about the black dog and duck, there was a murder. In fact, a murder and a suicide. But before we do that, I just wanna have a quick look at the amazing yew tree here. It's absolutely amazing. Now I know the lovely Julia will be very sorry to have missed this. So here's the story of the, the black dog and duck. So from what I understand, at around 10 years ago, something like that, new owners came and bought the pub. It's now a private house, but they bought the pub and they ran it down apparently, um, I think deliberately so. Then the couple that had it moved to West Chiltington and the owner, sorry, the husband, shot his wife and then killed himself. And apparently it made all the papers. So this pub, for whatever reason, wherever it is, I'm gonna see if I can find it, has got um, 
a strange association with it. Meanwhile, we've got some rather stunning houses, the typical sort of flint and brick houses with tiled roofs, which do just look absolutely elegant and lovely. Look at that, there's a beautiful old barn down there that's been um, transformed into a house. So I think, I think we're coming up to what was the pub. I don't know, she said it was on the corner. So was this it? I did look at an old picture. No, I don't think that's it. I've noticed as I've walked along this road, actually, there's some curious little topery going on with characters on the verge side. Absolutely fantastic. There's another one just up here. Have a look at this. This looks like a, I don't know whether that's supposed to be a, an emu or what. It just looks amazing. I love it. Um, right. So on the corner, we're coming up to a corner. I wonder if this might possibly be it. Behind those hedges where the men are working and drilling, I think, is where the black dog and duck used to be. But I'm not 100% sure. But she said it was on the corner and she said they were workmen working on it. So I can only assume this is it probably won't be able to poke my camera where I want to because if I've got this wrong then I completely apologize but yeah I think this must have been it ah this is the house it's got a plaque on it this is where John Galsworthy the author it says there lived the last years of his life in this house but this house according to the book that we were reading, is not as old as we're led to believe. I thought to end the video, I'd come back down to the river where I started. I'm not 100% sure that that was the black dog and duck, but it's a fascinating story. And if anybody wants to leave a comment in there about where it was, that would be just fantastic. It is. It's a strange old world, isn't it? In which places that were once a hive of activity are now very quiet. And those places that are now very busy may well have been 100, 200 years ago, very quiet. I'm thinking of things like the motorways where it cut through farmland and not much activity was going on. And now lorries and cars are caravans, camper vans and such like are thundering through. Time does move on, but thankfully there are these little old villages which we can go and investigate. Sorry about the wind noise. Well, if I was Th R. Thurston Hopkins, I'd be coming back down to the river here to get on board the little punt-like boat to take me to the other side where I could go to Amberley and perhaps spend the night at Amberley Castle or go and visit the tea rooms there. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to be waiting a long time for any ferry to come back up and take me across. Of course, I could swim, but I don't really want to get my camera wet. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to follow, like and subscribe. Support what I do and I'll continue to make more of these videos. Until next time, take care and bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.